Roswell flight test crew here today to take a look at the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition. Well, let's start with the unboxing. All right. So before we get started here, I want to take a look at the new packaging. It and it's got the super view, the really wide aspect ratio, which is really cool. So, um, and of course it's waterproof. That guy is rafting right. And now we'll see it's in the inside of the box. So it looks like, um, let's pull the little tabs. Tape just kind of slides out here. Perfect. And more boxes and more tape. Just pull. It's a little easier to open than the last two bottles were, I can tell you that. Side. And here we have it the GoPro 4. Attach the lid, so. Same little mount as we're used to. It's tiny. It's a real small little thing. So, okay. First thing we have are manuals. Let's see. And stickers. Perfect. So we got. Uh, couple of little booklets here getting started. It looks like a black manual, some stickers to festoon your aircraft up with or whatever. A couple more little booklets. Perfect. So let's see in the box here we have a few little accessories. Those are... that's it, empty box. So we have a couple of the little stickies. Looks like this one's they're both, this is a curved one here, a little square one's curved. i get that open. So if you got like a motorcycle helmet, this is the one you'd use here. Kind of nice actually. And then the straight flat one, everyone's used to. And we have here a USB cable. This is a mini B, it may be. So here is the, the three-way pivot. So once attached, you'll have three axes. And here's the skeletonized door. Now, most GoPros come with this anyway, but it's for audio. So the, the default door is solid, waterproof, blocks the audio. This is supposed to have better audio than a predecessor. So good feature to have and just completely open actually. I think it's because the lower end model has a screen there. This one does not. The high end model has no screen. Kind of an odd thing, but that's the way it is. Now the camera itself. Housing appears very similar to the GoPro 3s. There's a little difference on top here, of course. There's no little latching mechanism. It opens up and it's attached with a little metal bar there. It's not going to fall off, which happened a lot with the 3. So that's a nice improvement. Um, open the thing up here. Okay, so there's the GoPro 4. And it's got the little door on the side to keep dirt and dust out of the uh, HDMI, the SD card, and the USB port. So it's kind of nice and the same little connector in the back, or at least it looks the same at this point. You've got tally lights here, uh, of course lights in the front, and the bottom, and the top. So it'll blink every which direction like the GoPro 3 did. Uh, the battery goes in the bottom. Let me see about that. This little door slides and doesn't come off, which is kind of nice, because you could lose that in the GoPro one. I have a couple that don't have the door anymore. They disappeared somewhere, I'm not quite sure where. So, battery slides in, only one direction, this little tab here with the connections. It just slides in, and that's it. And close it. Okay, battery's installed. Now that's out of the box, I wanna find out how it stacks up size-wise to its predecessors. Now I've got a GoPro 4 here, and I've got a GoPro 3, and actually they look to be exactly the same as, it's deceiving, because this looks smaller, but it's really not actually. No, it looks identical to me. Yeah, this is actually. Let me take the GoPro 3 and stick it in the GoPro 4's uh, housing. Fits. So it looks like they didn't change anything about the dimensions. Okay, and let's compare this now to the predecessors the GoPro Hero 2, which looks huge and archaic by comparison. It's just an enormous camera. It, it, you get used to the GoPro 3, how petite and light this thing is, and then, you know, it looks similar in this angle. It's a little same height. It's just the depth. It's just so thick. Wow. And of course the GoPro 1, same size as the GoPro 2. So these cameras, they look old all of a sudden when compared to the sleekness of these designs. Now, one thing I've noticed, they did change the batteries, of course, again. The GoPro 1, you have this battery here, and with the GoPro 2, 
you have the same batteries, so they're interchangeable. So all the batteries you'd buy for the GoPro 1 work to the next model up. Now, that wasn't the case in the GoPro 3, and it's not the case in the GoPro 4, unfortunately. Again, with the batteries. Just keep the, if the GoPro 5, keep the same battery, please. And now on to the setup. So first thing I'm going to do is install an SD card. It's better to have one installed because then you have no problems with it saying no SD. It'll give you accurate time as far as how much recording time you've got in different modes. So just click and you're installed. Now, the GoPro 4 takes a little bit more time to fire up the GoPro 3 and 2 seems to. So press hold the button, let go, and wait. There it is. Okay. So the first thing you'll see is what mode you're currently in displayed on top of the screen. So with the camera on, this button in the front becomes a mode button. And what it does, it toggles between different camera modes, like between video, stills, video plus stills, whatever. And the top button, of course, records. Now, you hit the button on the side, a little wrench, it goes to configure each mode. So if you're in video mode, you can change resolution, frame rate, protune, and the button on top becomes toggle switch. So you select your option here, you toggle the option there, and then you get back out of the mode, press the wrench again, you're back to recording. Now, the manual kind of has a simple breakdown of this, but doesn't actually explain what these do. So let's, I guess they expect you to use the phone app, which is the preferred way of setting up anyway. So let's set the phone app up now. First thing, toggle the Wi-Fi on. So basically, hit the mode button until you get the setup screen. Top button to toggle setup screen. First option is the Wi-Fi option. So just top button again, and then choose GoPro app. And now the Wi-Fi is on. So a little blue light illuminates. At this point, you want to pull up your phone or tablet and select the Wi-Fi that is the GoPro. Now it'll be the strongest signal, obviously it's right here, but it'll typically be GP, then like a big number. So connect to that. The default password is GoPro Hero. Once you're hooked up there, you can change the name, change the password, then you're good to go. Launch the app, searching for GoPro. Now the app is looking for the GoPro itself, even though it's on the network, it doesn't know this yet. There's a small number displayed on the window here. That's gonna be required to get the GoPro to actually work with the application. So connect to control. Okay, here we are, screen pops up, and it wants the code now. So code in front of the camera is 339-889, done. Pair my camera. Okay, so pairing is done. Now it wants you to name your camera and create a password because the default password, obviously, everyone have that. So once you've changed the name of the camera, it will disconnect from the network and you'll have to reattach to what the phone thinks is a new camera. So go back into the camera options and toggle your Wi-Fi and then reconnect. Basically, the phone will pull up a preview and options so you can configure the camera from the phone. Here we have the name of the camera, we have the mode it's currently set to, Wi-Fi, battery condition, the bottom down here we have how many pictures it can take, it took one so far, uh, we have playback, from here you can playback things you've recorded, okay, and then the record button, and this right here is where you change modes, it's faster to do so in the camera, but you can do it here pretty easy, so you can change your mode from a time lapse, you can go to video mode, you can change which mode you're in, and then of course the wrench is your configuration. You hit that, brings you to a config page where you can set all your options in all your different modes. Now it separates them, video settings here, photo settings, multi-shot settings, setup of the camera itself, like uh, the blinking LED, video mode, whether it's upside down, right side up, pretty easy right there, your date and time. Now to set date and time, you press that, it synchronizes with your phone. So this date and time is now in the camera. So pretty easy there. Okay, so that was the GoPro application. Now, one thing we found in playing with the camera is this little button on the side has another function. Now, with the camera turned on, you can press and hold it, it will turn the Wi-Fi on. And with the camera on or off, you can press and hold it, it'll turn the Wi-Fi back off again. Now, that's an improvement from the last model because the last model, you could bump that button and turn the Wi-Fi on with the camera off and drain your battery completely, so that's nice. Okay, so here we are out in the field to put this new camera through its paces. First question for us is, is it gonna work with FPV? So Tekken signs back at the bench getting this thing hooked up. Let's see whether or not it's gonna work. So for our FPV test, we have the GoPro 4, 
and I bought this from securitycamera2000.com. It's a little micro 200 milliwatt transmitter, and it came with the cable for GoPro 3, but you know what? We're gonna see if it works. Just plugs in, just put our little blue band antenna in there. About the smallest FPV rig you can get. That's it, and just a battery. All right, let's see how it works. Well, we're definitely getting FPV signal through the, uh, from the GoPro. It's got a nice new OSD. It's nice and clean. Across the top, you've got both the elapsed time recorded, plus a countdown of the time available on your recording media. Got a battery indicator in the upper right-hand corner, and in the lower left, it tells you what format you're in. So very nice. Tekkenstein's little rig for FPV isn't bad either. So we just finished our first FEV flight with the GoPro 4, and we noticed something interesting about it. When the GoPro's not recording, the video's perfect and smooth and buttery. When we hit record in 1080p 30 frames a second, it was really choppy and kind of weird visual effect going on. At 48, it's a little better. At 60, it's almost gone. If not completely gone, 120, it's perfect. So the frame rate you're recording at affects your FPV quality. That's interesting to know. So something to keep in mind. So the next thing we want to do for you is a side-by-side -side comparison of the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition with several other high-definition cameras. Tekkenstein's got those cameras and a lot of adhesive tape, and he's putting together a rig to get that done. Okay, so what I've come up with here is an old X-Pro Heli undercarriage, some gaffer's tape, and we've got the GoPro 4, the GoPro 3 Plus, the GoPro 2, and of course a Mobius. Uh, unstabilized, of course, but it'll give us a good uh, comparison, I believe. As you watch this footage, bear in mind that we had to downsample and composite it to produce this side-by-side -side comparison. So don't rely on this as an absolute demonstration of image quality. We just want to show you the relative performance of the four cameras. Also, we specifically want to show you how they adapt to changing lighting conditions, so we flew through this shelter area. All told, we had the four cameras running continuously for about 20 minutes. When we were compositing them, we noticed that the three GoPros stayed in perfect sync with each other, but the Mobius slowly drifted until it was a few seconds off by the end of the recording. All right, so that was our look at the GoPro Hero 4 Black Edition. Hope you're watching, see you next time. All right, fly safe. And then you can modify your settings using your phone. Unless it rings. <coughs> <coughs>